a time of national panic, unity is essential to survival. But while we struggle with our personal well-being and attempt to get a grip on our futures, immigrants continue to be unjustly kept imprisoned in detention centers. While some prisons are releasing low-risk offenders in order to minimize health concerns, ICE has ignored pressures to do the same. The conditions in these centers have not improved since they've made headlines, they've only received less coverage. Immigrants are not only living in inhumane conditions, they're living in fear for their lives. There are many misconceptions about who actually resides in these detention facilities. Entering the country illegally is a civil infraction, not a federal misdemeanor. The punishment for a civil infraction is generally a fine, only permitting jail time if one has been found to be in civil contempt. Despite this, many immigrants in detention facilities face conditions that are far worse than those in federal prisons. Many believe these immigrants to be criminals when, in reality, 61.2% of immigrants in detention facilities have never been convicted of a crime. These numbers have stayed above 50% since September 2016. Just 1 in 10, 10.7% of detainees, and less than 6,000 detainees nationwide, have had a criminal conviction on record as of July 2019. Even so, the classification of criminal in this case represents crimes that generally do not fit the common stereotypes of criminality, rather referring to minor infractions. In fact, using the ICE definition, most U.S. citizens have engaged in some forms of criminal activities, such as jaywalking, speeding, or other forms of minor infractions, known as track. During these pandemics, prisons across the nations have deemed it necessary to release low-level offenders. However, in the old Tay Mesa detention facility, Carlo has been detained for three months and even got sick with a fever, despite the fact that he doesn't have any criminal history. He, his bond was posted. This is a common occurrence for detainees in these immigrant detention facilities, even though their lives are contingent upon these decisions. According to NBC San Diego, detainees such as Sergio Jaime feels he and other detainees should be afforded the same rights as everybody else. He said, all we want is an opportunity with our families. We are not criminals. What scares me is that we could get sick and die here alone without our family. And conversely, if someone in our family gets sick, we can't even be there. Keeping immigrants in detention centers that compromise their safety, health, and well-being are contrary to the American values of individual freedom and civil liberty. NBC San Diego has reported that detained migrants share large housing pods and buses also transfer them to other facilities, but are refused any protective face masks to prevent infection. However, guards and employees have access to fitted gas masks and hazmat suits. According to the migrants who spoke to NBC7, as well as social advocates who are in contact with several inmates. Keeping immigrants in these dangerous conditions is a clear violation of their due process rights. During this unprecedented time, let us not forget the most vulnerable among us. Help us release immigrants to prevent the spread of COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. You can learn more about this issue by clicking on the news page on our website, youthforborderaid.org or through our various social media accounts, which is at youth for border aid, with the number four. You can donate to help buy bonds to get immigrants out of these dangerous conditions in the Otay Mesa facility by donating on Border Angels GoFundMe, which can be found under the donation page on our website.